Uh, we're going to kick off the next presentation. Alec from Targa is going to um, talk through some of the things they've done. All right, so as Graham said, I work for Target Resources. I'm mostly working on the Data Supplies mobile application from Maximo. I just really wanted to jump in and kind of show you a couple of things that we've actually worked on for our end users. One of them being the quick downtime reporting, which will allow an end user to go in and uh, report an asset that's been down, that he's fixed, and it's now back up again. I'll just show you through the process. So uh, what we have here is the home screen on Data Supplies. Alec, before you go any further, could I just ask you to use the Chrome Zoom to Sure. Come up a couple of notches on there. Wow. Um, and I just do Control plus plus. Do you want me to just go directly into Chrome then? Uh, either way, just, I think Control plus plus does the same thing on there. Okay. Um, control. Oh well, I'll just jump into Chrome here. Yeah. So this is our test environment. Control. Usually plus. with the Presenting like this about the zoom rate of 125 is good. Okay. So I'm going to log in as myself right over here. Take us to the home screen. And this will display several of our views that we custom created for the specific purpose. We're just going to let it load up for a couple seconds here. A couple more seconds. <laughs> Uh, this is for the downtime reporting, so if an end user has just uh, yeah, gone to a location and found a down asset, fixed it, they can actually input that information and send it back to Maximo. Yep. So as you can see, we've got this custom view that we created here called Quick Downtime Reporting. When you click on it, it takes us to a blank page over here. One option that we have is Add Work Order. In fact, that's the only option we currently have. When we click on this one, it takes us to a work order creation screen, but a modified view. Uh, a lot fewer options than the standard work order thing, just to make sure that uh, it's as simplified as possible, doesn't overwhelm the end user, and just allows them to put in the bare minimum stuff in order to push this as a field complete work order. So up here, we have a few required fields. I'll just do uh, And then we have an asset. When we click on this, it actually will take us to a list of assets that we can choose from for this specific site and location. Please refresh. <sighs> Let me do this real quick. Synchronize. Add work order. See, the synchronization, usually when I get duplicate key values, I just haven't run the synchronization, which I did run on the local application, but I didn't expect to be working in Chrome, so sorry about that. And you know what? Maybe I'll just plug directly into the Internet here. Did I lose you? Sorry about this again, guys. Well, I'd hate to make you wait, so let's see if I can just go through the application itself. So the application is in now, for those who recognize yeah. it, that's our Windows application. We've got iOS, we've got Android, we've got Windows. You don't have to use the browser, but as you can see, the look and feel is identical between Pretty all much. of them. And the only reason why I jumped in the browser is because I wanted to zoom in a little bit, which I'm not able to do. Does it normally allow me to, that you know, to zoom in on the regular I am, Windows app? Yeah. I don't know. I'm a Mac user, so I don't use that. <laughs> so again, okay. 
Well, can you guys see that sort of okay? Okay, cool. We'll just do this until the synchronization finishes up over here. Actually, that looks like it's pretty close to being done. 88%, 89%. Networks. Uh, sorry. So Wilson, you can see here instead of just bundling it into little temp files and transferring everything over like we demoed yesterday without hand, you can see what the rec actual record is that's being queried and then being transferred. And if you have problems with synchronization tuning, you can follow that and see this is where it hangs. Maybe there's a problem with the data or recursive query, particularly that's big that. file. I did some testing once with somebody and they said it, the sync was taking too long. In their test data, somebody had attached a 100 meg video to a work order. Yeah, it was taking a minute. So um, you can see everything on here. OK. okay. Uh, if, it, if the network breaks and it stops, you can usually pick it up again yeah. and, and carry on. Exactly. Okay. That's generally the case. OK. so. The assets actually loaded up this time, so this gives us a list of the different assets. I'm just going to pick or one at random. Let's just do Able Discharge Coalescer. You click on that to select it. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but the location actually auto-populated based on the asset that I picked. So we definitely added that integration. It also works both ways. If you have a location and you pick that first, if it only has one asset tied to it, then it auto-populates. But if it has like two, three, or four, it remains blank, but it's still a required field. So then I scroll down a little bit more, and we'll have a downtime start date, a downtime hours, and downtime code. These are the three most valuable things for this to work properly. So say that we have a downtime start date, and we're addressing it. Say that it went down at 1 AM on January the 1st, or 105, right there. Input the information over here, and it highlights that information. Then we have downtime hours. How long was it down for? Let's put maybe 12 hours, or something like that. And then we have the downtime code, which is just a few you know, different reasons why it may have gone down. I'm just going to pick built. <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate or not. But. So then we come down over here, and we actually created a work type custom that's called DT, which stands for downtime reporting, only downtime, no failure. But you have the option to switch this to corrective maintenance or ESNH, environmental safety health. So we're going to stick with DT for now. And then work order activity, again, we have a drop-down list that you can select from. It auto-populates or it auto-defaults to ops, but we can definitely change that as ever we need it. So then is unscheduled, defaults to yes, but we can always change that. Is shutdown required, defaults to yes, we can still change that. Shutdown scope, asset, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm ready to I'll click on done, right? Or wrong. If I click on done, boom, you must enter labor hours for this work order because the assumption is that someone went in fixed the downed asset, got everything working again. So we need to record that information in order to continue. So I click on OK. There's an Add Labor button at the top of this. And up here, we can pick whoever the person was. I don't currently have a labor record tied to my user account. Otherwise, it would have auto-populated to my user ID and everything. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to search. And we'll go with uh, J Barnett. Sounds good. Type defaults to work. Wrap that. Start date. Let's say it started on the, I don't know, the second. Regular hours. I spent uh, six hours and I got it running again. So I click on done now. This time when I click on done, it actually takes me back over here. So up at the top left-hand corner, that gives us a status of what I've done so far. And right next to upload changes, I have a two. So if I click over here, we can see hey, we've created a brand new work order. It's going to be set to FCOM since the work has already been done. And here's the labor information for the person who did the work so that that can get pushed to Maximo as well. So now we run the upload. <sighs> this thing keeps popping up. Like it'll work for me, and then all of a sudden I come up here and it doesn't work. <laughs> It has to do, from what I've actually been working with the Data Splice team on this, it has to do with like a mismatch in the time zones between our server. I just went through all you went through all that? <laughs> OK. Uh-huh. <laughs> OK. Uh, we're going to talk after this then, please. 
Okay. No, that's perfect. We'll talk after this because I've been battling this forever. Every time I think I've gotten it, like right over there, I tested it three times. It works. I come up here, boom, it fails, of course. So, all right. So now that I've done that, huh? I must have done. Golly. Am I good? Okay. So now, if we come back to this over here, we can check our assigned work orders. I'm going to look for anything that's in FCOMP because that would represent what I've just finished. So search. And we called it test again or another test or something like that. Let's take this information over here, control C, and let's go into Maximo. So we'll go over to, well, let's zoom that in too. Let's go into our work order tracking and we're going to search on this particular work order that I just created. And when I click on it, we'll be able to see the information relevant to what I just did. So how do I get there again? Hmm? And then we go to manage downtime history. And it will actually display the information. We have downtime of 12 hours. We have the start work order. We have the end date. We have the end work order, et cetera. So all the information that I typed in was able to generate this information for this particular work order. And we can keep track of it. So let's also take a look at the labor information for this particular one. If I were to click on actuals over here, we see that we have Jay Barnett over here. And we see that we put six hours of work, right? And it contains the start date that I put in there, 1, 2, 18, start time, end time, et cetera, based on the regular hour information that I typed in. So that's how we're handling the downtime reporting at the moment. Any questions so far? Sort of suggestions, feedback, anything? Watch me. <laughs> Agree. Yeah. So we can even compare that really briefly to our regular work order view, which contains a whole lot more options, just so you can sort of see, hey, we've got this option that has a very simple way for us to report strictly downtime information versus actually creating a new work order that does not necessarily have any downtime associated with it. So this over here, come back home. We have the work order search view. We can add a new work order. And compared to the previous screen, there are a lot more options to choose from, way more stuff that we can actually input. So basically, we created that as a simplified way for people to report their downtime information. OK, in addition to that, I thought we'd also talk about another view that we created called the meter entry, which is pretty much exactly how it sounds whenever the end user goes and they want to report meter information they can use this particular view to do that. So when I click on that, you'll notice that several things pop up. All of these are associated with my default site, Arcoma. Let's just pick one that has a previous reading real quick. So I've highlighted that over here. None of the things that I click on over here are editable, except for these two over here, new reading and new reading date. So say that I want to add the brand new reading for this particular event. If I want, I can come over here and I can type in 20439. Any idea what's going to happen? 
when we compare it to the previous reading, it's going to error out. It's going to say, hey, buddy, you put in way too low of an amount. You need to actually go beyond the previous amount. So I click on OK. It blanks it out again. So say that I want to put a whole, you know, I accidentally put in a whole bunch of nines. I fat finger it. Hey, buddy, also, not good. We think you've made a mistake here. We put it in like a buffer of, I think, 26 hours just to make sure, you know, if you're a little over, a little under, that actually allows you to do it. But if you're way over like 9,900, blah, 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 it's going to throw an error like that. So let's put a much more reasonable value. Let's put maybe 22 or 21, yeah, 21, 400, something like that. That's tolerable. As soon as I put that information down, the new reading date defaults to this time right now. But if I were to change this back to, well, I'll go into that a little bit later. There are a few more validations that I put in to make sure that you don't go over or under by too much just in case. So now that I've updated this information over here, I'm going to upload it, click here, and it's going to get sent over to Maximo. Do you have a new rollover? Hmm? Do, you have a new rollover? do we? Um, Not currently. Uh, okay. Do we have any? Yeah, so the question uh, for those remote, hmm? are there any with rollovers? And the answer at the moment is no. Uh, but they're looking at it. Absolutely. Online, all on the same page. It's filtered. We have a, a lot of uh, meters that are coming into via SCADA. That's a daily import. So that's filtered out here. So they're only seeing the ones that are need manual entry right now. So the automated readings come through the report. Then it's all automatically. So they can take that filter off and see them all if they wanted to. But by default, that filter's off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a microphone for people when they ask their questions so the folks that are uh, calling in can hear because they aren't able to hear your questions and they, they're asking, well, what did they say? No. <laughs> okay, cool. So moving on, the first thing that I noticed is that the upload was successful. Yay, that's pretty good. The second thing I noticed is that the previous reading has now changed. It used to be 20,440. is now updated to the new value that I just typed in there, so it's instantaneous. Pretty cool. When I come over here, well, I can barely see it, but if I click over here, I can actually view the meter history information of this particular record. It goes back, I think, 20 entries, and it shows the date, when it was entered, the delta, all that important information, just in case you want to see historically what's been going on over the past 20 entries. We can increase or decrease that based on the need. So if we come back to Maximo and look at this location, History is uh, one of the places where we can now do the graphing, so you can look at that visually as well and see the trend instead of trying to mentally visualize it. Sure, we can definitely do that. I mean, I have to go in through the back end to make that, you know, filter distinction, but yeah, we can definitely do something like that. Okay, so when we click on this, we can actually view. Also, that was the other thing. Like, this is actually occurring at the location level, and it rolls into the asset level, is that correct? So it covers both bases. Hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> All right, so when we come over here, we can actually check out this location. We can go to Select Action, Manage Meter Reading History, just to see comparatively how these things match up. 21,400, we can see the delta. This goes all the way to 67. I just limit mine to 20, just to be simple. Manual meter re uh, readings, that, that they're doing that on a weekly basis. So they're not doing like a daily update to these. It's pretty much on a weekly up basis they update these. Cool. 
So any additional information we want to go into? That's pretty much what I got. I know that on the, the mobile side, after you sync, it automatically goes to disconnected mode, right? It can. It can. That's okay. what I have it set up to do. If yeah. it's set up to do that, then mm -hmm. what about whenever you make updates to work orders or updates to meter readings? That it gets cached locally. Yeah, it gets cached locally okay. until the point where we're back in an online environment. Then we can run the synchronization. It will attempt to jump back onto the network and push the information directly into Maximo. But yeah, up until that point, it will store it locally. Yeah. yeah, there's different ways we can set that up depending on what you want to do. Correct. So that's pretty much all I got. Any questions, concerns, any suggestions, follow-up? Yes, sir? Mm-hmm. Like currently, our meter readings or star meter readings, we don't currently have that set up, but we can. We can absolutely change that. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I think we were just trying to limit the amount of information being displayed on the screen at the time, but we can definitely add that stuff. I actually think we had something like that, but then we just we limited it because it started getting very complicated and cumbersome, and we just thought, hey, let's keep it simple. Once we get this locked down, then we can talk about actually not complicating it, but making it more robust, I want to say. And I couldn't get the microphone over there quick enough. <laughs> um, an observation from Targa, how successful this has been, and the user uptake has been incredible, because taking this down on paper, then writing it in Maximo um, was hard. This is really easy. And then I'll just have one observation here as well, real quick. Reminder that this is a customer story that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Alex built all this. We gave him a couple of days training on site here in Houston, and he's done all this himself, similar to the colonial story um, this morning. Um, Data Splice hasn't done any of this. Uh, they didn't have to pay us for any of this work. It was all done in-house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have some cases sometimes where uh, they do come across a, a meter that apparently somebody else had been plugging in 24 hours a day, 24, 24, 24. Uh -huh. They just keep increasing that number mm -hmm. without actually looking at the meter. So then a couple of weeks go by, and the new shift comes in and says, this number is completely off. It's too high. Yeah. Um, so they do need a, to enter in a value that's less than that previous reading. Um, hmm? Well, but if they don't have direct access to Maximo, if they're only using Data Splice or our guys are currently using what they have as a mobile solution, um, I didn't know if, if that's something that, um, I mean, uh, do you just instruct them to call the guy? that can make that entry or um, if you had any plans to uh, be able to um, uh, notify the person that needs to make that update okay. through uh, maybe a work order that gets assigned to him or that's okay. what we did for our mobile solutions. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually um, funny that actually came up. We had a conversation about how we should handle that, whether we should remove that restriction or not. And I think we just we want to see how well it plays out. But initially, yeah, we should probably have them call their supervisor and then through Maximo yeah. we can make the proper arrangements that way. I, we, um, I, I love the restriction. It's set up exactly how we're doing it, too. You got that buffer in there, which is perfect, because if yeah. they miss a time, uh, they course, need to catch yeah. up. Um, you could think about uh, instructing them to uh, create a work order of type uh, meter update, something like that, or meter issue is what we did. Um, and I've got my Maximo set up so that when that work order of meter type mm -hmm. gets created, I'm the only one that sees it. So I know to go in there and I immediately you. correct it 
Yeah, and so I'm able to do that every morning. It's the first thing I do. And no, I actually like that. Bottom line there as well is if Maximo allows you to do something through the front end, then 99 times out of 100 you can do it in Data Splice as well. There are some exceptions where there's um, tied in with the MBO, there's some kind of Java Bean technology where it launches something on the screen and the only way the MBO will accept something is through the front end of Maximo, but those are rare. There's just it's a very like few. like you said, 98% we can right. definitely do through Data Splice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I learned that the hard way a few times. <laughs> no, I've been there. Uh, okay. How are the users selecting which meters should they be hitting? Do you have the view when they come in? Well, this. Are you talking about like the locations? Well, right now you got all the locations. So I come in. How do mm -hmm. I know which meters I'm supposed to hit? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Well, I don't know. You guys <laughs> have a good answer for that. I, I assume they know. They have our sheet of paper. They're kind of familiar with what the locations are. There's we can refine it even further if we need to, but that's currently the way we have to set up. Hey, yeah. pulling them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to a point where we'll have uh, barcodes on all of our equipment. They and can, they can just scan the barcode, scan it in. and then they, you know, they, they can do it from there. We're not quite there yet. A few more steps. <laughs> and barcodes. All right. Thanks very much, Alex. Um, we're going to well, take a short break while we set up for the next one, which is one of our remote presenters. I appreciate that. Thank you very I'll much. come talk to you in a minute. <laughs> Thanks again, guys.